A pleasant good morning and welcome to Coach's Corner live from the McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. We do this every Saturday morning here uh, from the McDonald's on Clifty Drive. Kind of a a little bit of an off and on rainy day, cloudy skies, a breeze in the air, but we are talking a sport that's going to be here before we know it, and the reason I'm going to the gym every day, and that is soccer, and we are going to be talking with Jefferson County Soccer Association President, Brian Sockleben. Brian, good morning, sir. Good morning. Appreciate uh, you having me. My pleasure, sir. So um, before we get into what's all going on this year, let's recap last year. You had an unbelievable number of kids participate last year and it was a really special year for the had, program. Had a pretty good turnout. We had uh, somewhere around probably 440 kids in the fall. Uh, we just, from that interest level, we ended up having a spring. We just finished up a spring league this year and had over 240 kids in that. So it's a, it's overall, it's a, it's a growing sport. A lot of it, a lot of interest in it now. What do you think about, what is it about soccer that is the reason it's growing so much? I think it's because of the competitive nature of it. Um, they get more kids on the field. Um, a lot more uh, positions to play on the field. Um, you see a lot more on TV now. Obviously, the Women's World Cup is just starting up. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people watching TV today, especially on a rainy day. They're probably, hopefully, they're going to come over and see us to do registrations today. But at the same time, watch a little bit of soccer on TV. Well, and you see the success because as JCSA grows, you see the high school programs being extremely successful. You've seen uh, all three programs here in Jefferson County uh, win sectional championships in recent years, some of them winning regional games. And then even a team like Switzerland County uh, has picked up interest uh, in their program. Uh, so it, it's really goes to show how building something from the bottom up helps. Absolutely, absolutely help. When working with these kids, we are our turnout. Uh, years ago, we would expect three and four year old league to have around 30 kids. Last year, we were around 80, 80 plus. Uh, that's just kind of an idea of what's to come for our program. Although we expect those kids to continue on up to uh, the ranks, come in, jump and play in our 5U or 7U and our 9U and up to our 14U league. So, and hopefully overwhelm the junior high with some um, excellent soccer kids. Well, and you, you know, one other thing you all do is you put on various camps throughout uh, the summer and the year, which a lot, which camps are huge over the summer. You just wrapped up one this week. Uh, do you have any others going on? We've actually got an upcoming uh, uh, soccer camp, the British soccer camp. We do that through Challenger Sports. This will be our tenth straight year that we've done that with them. Uh, it's actually some coaches that come over from England. They're actually stationed in the United States. Uh, I'm not sure how many we'll have this year, but we expect around two, possibly three. We've had a lot of uh, sign-ups here in the past week. I get notifications when we've got a local uh, child that um, uh, signs up for that program. So, uh, and those, those guys, when they, the coaches come in, they'll come and actually stay with families. And actually one of our uh, board members, Jamie Kelsey, is going to be entertaining those, uh, the, uh, the coaches that come this year. Mm -hmm. I think we're expecting around two right now, possibly a third coach. So uh, those guys actually are, are fun to work around and be around. They're very knowledgeable of the game. They've all obviously played the game. So I expect a pretty good turnout for that camp. Well, and on a personal note on that camp, my little brother played soccer all through high school and he went to that camp when he was a kid and he said that camp taught him so many things that he used all the way through high school. There's, yeah, there's so much offered in that. Uh, for the younger kids, uh, they've got a half-day program and they offer, also offer a full-day program. So, uh, and, and they actually, they, they'll teach you the things that are for that age group. It's age-specific stuff that they'll work with. They, uh, they've told us in the past also they're willing to do a coaches clinic on Wednesday evening of the, the week that they're going to be here. Now, they're planning on being here the week of June 17th through June 21st. So if you haven't signed up yet, you can go, go on the website, challengersports.com. Uh, type in the zip code for the area 47250. You'll find Jefferson County Soccer Association as the host site. You can then choose... Well, we'll make whatever selection you want. Uh, obviously, choose British Soccer Camp, which is the name of it, and uh, they'll get you signed up. It's never too late to get in there. Um, you, you've got time. You can talk about it today during open registration. I've got some forms that will be available over there as well. So definitely a good camp to get into. Uh, as you mentioned, we just finished up a uh, uh, spring camp. Uh, Lindsay Sackley been memorial, uh, our second annual memorial camp. Had a really good turnout for that. The kids had a great time. Post a lot of pictures on Facebook, so hopefully people have got a chance to go on there and, and find our Facebook page, Jefferson County Soccer Association, and you can see pictures of the kids and run around the fields and really enjoying themselves. Y you know, you mentioned uh, teaching kids certain things at certain ages because one issue that at times kids can have is they see not only the women on TV but the men. The men are getting ready to play in the Gold Cup on TV, and they want to do these fancy moves on TV. But how they got there is got to learn the fundamentals at a young age. you got to start with the basics. Uh, that's some of the things we talked about this just, just past week in our, uh, our spring camp uh, we were telling the kids don't get too too crazy with the ball don't do too 
there too many things that you really can't do at that age level. Uh, some kids want to do scissor kicks and they want to be taught things, you know, special fancy foot moves that really are more appropriate to learn at an older age group. So uh, you want to learn that we just basically work on the basic fundamentals and you want to learn things that basically the coaches want to uh, focus on. So we usually go into each camp with an itinerary of what we want to cover, uh, kind of what, and this is what I expect that the guys that are coming from the uh, Challenger Sports will do. They'll come in with an agenda, what they want to cover every day to get the kids more aware of what they need to be doing. Well, and, you know, doing things like this, you know, it'll get kids interested because soccer growing up, I know for me, was something that just kids did not do. It was not a sport. I mean, back back in the day, Southwestern had a co-ed team. Madison was barely fielding a girls team uh, back when I was in elementary school and into junior high. And then now you look up, Southwestern has two teams. Austin this year is starting their own girls team. Uh, Shaw's still co-ed, but that's a very small school, so that's a lot different. But you just see all the participation everywhere of all the teams everywhere. It's always soccer that has the most kids. That's exactly right. We had actually... Uh, we uh, just recent, just this year started to go back into uh, to travel, having offering travel program. Uh, we had uh, I think a 10U, a 12U, I believe, and a 15U traveling team. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we had to register those kids to Indiana U Soccer. Uh, so they uh, they enjoyed that, and basically the places they've gone to, they can see the high interest level, the amount of teams that actually participate in those tournaments. So it's definitely a growing sport. We expect our numbers to probably even surpass what we had last year, which that's fine by me. Just got to make sure I've got the field space to, to make it all happen, which all we have to do basically is expand, expand our, uh, our, our uh, days. And, and currently we only play maybe two days a week. We'll probably have to offer a third day, even a fourth day. So not a problem. You know, we, we can keep up with that. And we're willing to offer that. We want to get everybody out there that we can. You, you know, one of the things uh, when JCSA that I did, you know, I was an official over there for many years. Um, is this an opportunity really for a lot of kids who maybe they like soccer, but they're not very good at it, offer officiating? Do you, is, how do you all do that maybe for like maybe some junior high kids that are interested in refing those younger kids? We do. We actually do have most of who we have we used this past spring and what we used last fall, as you remember when you did it with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got kids that are in high school. You know, we, you get paid to do each game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got kids that do that uh, referee uh, age groups, six and seven year olds. We started doing that this past year or in the spring. Uh, we've got kids that do the uh, the ten and over up to 15 years of age. Um, obviously, you know, you got to learn to get up down the field just a little bit, stay a little bit with where the where the field of, where the ball is. Um, so it, it's 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 you know, we pay them a little bit of money just to get and get them out there. Plus, they get a chance to learn the game even more. A lot of who we see are kids that have played the game of soccer, so have somewhat somewhat of awareness around it. Um, I've got Paul DeLarmitz, who is still part of our program. He does a, uh, a little clinic with the kids and um, does a coach's clinic occasionally with us. So he'll do a referee clinic, make sure the kids kind of a, have a general idea what the rules are, and where they, you know, he'll walk them through kind of a simulated situation sure. on being a referee. So I appreciate all of him, everything that Paul DeLamers does for us. He, you know, he, he, ta- he taught me back in the day. Uh, hunt seems like 100 years ago now. And, you know, but again, it's the same thing. You learn the basics at the young level, and then maybe you go further as you yep. get older. Yeah, you, yeah, you can do a lot. Just, just what, what you learn at, at, at the younger age level. You, you, I can see kids that I've, I've, of course, I've been part of JCSA for a long time. So I see kids now at the 15U and 14U level that I remember seeing at the 13 and, and or the th- 3U and the 6U level or 5U level that have really developed. And I'm hoping to uh, take a little bit of, uh, you know, responsibility for that because I think our uh, our group does a pretty good job with yeah. the kids. Uh, we try to get coaches that uh, we can work with and uh, we'll basically work on the fa- uh, focus on the fundamentals of the game. So I've been pretty happy with uh, most of the coaches we have, if not all the coaches that we have an opportunity to work with directly. So uh, I think our coaches have a big part in that and our parents have a big part in that. So we always tell the kids, not only do you want, we want you working on uh, touching the ball, at the field and practice, we want you to go home and kind of work on things with mom and dad if you can. Now, uh, you're again, you said there's going to be a flat fee this year. What is that going to be? The flat fee is $50, and part of that actually is because of us re-registering with the state of Indiana. There's a, there's a partial fee for each kid that we register through the state, and uh, that covers off so your uniform cost, and uh, we'll provide a uniform shirt for each kid, kind of like we did in the spring. We basically had, uh, we offered the same uh, cost in the spring, and felt like it was a pretty reasonable cost compared to what it used to be Back years ago, uh, we've tried to find ways to reduce our costs over the years, and I think a $50 flat rate will work pretty good. So I expect a pretty good turnout just based on the cost, based on the numbers, and based on how, the, how what kind of program we offer. And you look at that, and uh, again, the sign-up is there, and now the travel opportunities are there as well. 
Also, these leagues, are these co-ed leagues or are these uh, separated by the gender? Everything we have is co-ed. Uh, all of our programs from the age of three all the way up to 15 years of age, it's all co-ed um, across the board. And I think uh, it, it's, it, we've been very successful with that. Uh, we've done that for, for many, many years and had a good, lot of good turnout. We actually get feedback from the girls that I've talked to at the high school level that kind of miss playing the co-ed soccer because the boys brought out the best in them, and the boys will tell you the same thing. The girls brought out the best in them. So I think being co-ed is, uh, is a, good, a good way to, uh, to attack it and, uh, and work with the kids. So i uh, got a lot of good positive feedback from that. Uh, one thing we want to make sure we mention, uh, as far as the junior high kids, uh, you are able to play JCSA soccer as well as play for the junior high team. There's typically not ever a, a scheduling conflict. Uh, if we get enough interest level at the, with the 15-year-old kids, we're going to try to offer a 15U program this year. We haven't had that for a little bit, but uh, uh, based on what we had in the spring, we anticipate that number to be high enough that we could possibly offer a, a 15U league. It, it, well, and maybe at talk about this what's what would be the difference because to some kids they may be like well i don't want to play two different leagues what's the difference between playing in let's say a 15u league and then just playing junior high soccer well i think over with us uh i'm not sure exactly how much playing time the kids get to junior high obviously they're trying to get a little more competitive yep with us you're pretty much guaranteed uh, a certain amount of playing time so that's one opportunity there I think there's a little more uh, direct contact with the kids. Uh, we don't try to keep, we don't try to overwhelm our teams with too many, too many players. So coaches have more of an opportunity to, to work more directly with some of the kids uh, with a reduced amount. Like at the 15U level, I think we had somewhere around 13, or 12, 13 kids per per team. So that's what the coach gets to work with. Um, Obviously, the younger groups are just you know five or six kids a team, but uh, still a fun group a group to work with, and it makes it a little bit easier on the, obviously the the younger kids coaches to, to work with that small amount. Well, and you know one thing we got to get a lot of, a lot of love and a lot of credit to these coaches because these coaches are doing are taking a lot of time out of their probably very busy lives to coach these kids, and they do it just because they love teaching and they love the game. Yep, absolutely, and a lot of them will tell you that they want to coach because they want to learn more about the game. And a lot of them enjoy it. I mean, obviously, 90%, if not more than that, are, are, are basically parents of our kids. Yeah. Uh, occasionally, we may get a, a, a boy or a girl from high school that has some interest in wanting to coach over with us. But typically, it's a, it's a parent. And that parent wants to learn as much as they possibly can. We've got booklets that we get through Challenger Sports that we give to the, any coach that, or any parent that wants to learn the game, not necessarily even be a coach. You, we've got books that we can ha hand to you or give you websites you can go to and learn more about the game. You know, we mentioned coaching. Obviously, once you get older, the coaches will get a little more intense at times because that's when it gets competitive. But at the younger levels, I think you're not going to get a screamer coach. You're not going to get any of those because at, th at that level, you're trying to just teach these kids is all you're trying to do. You're not uh, – coaching is definitely part of it. and You want to win. It is competitive. But the bigger picture is you're just teaching them about the game. That way they can get better as they get older. Absolutely. You just want to do all you can to try to get them comfortable with the game. You don't want to chase them away from the game. So uh, that's the last thing I want to see anything done with any child. And that's what we try to, to uh, talk with the coaches about. We Some years ago, we instituted a code of conduct. Coaches sign that, parents sign that, and uh, the kids we have on occasion, they'll have, the kids will sign that. So try to keep everything calm. We don't want anybody going after the referees. I mean, as you mentioned a while ago, we do use a lot of kids as referees in our program. So we don't want to chase those guys off. You know, we need those referees. And, and believe me, as you mentioned, Without our parents and the commitment we have from our parents, our program would not be as successful as it is. Well, and that's the big thing. You know, uh, the IHSA Commissioner Bobby Cox, he put an op-ed in the Indianapolis Star uh, a few months ago. It was in a letter to parents. And th he said this isn't just for high school. This is for all levels of sports. He said these are kids. They're having fun. And these officials are human beings with regular jobs. You need to back off or else the sports are just going to go away because people aren't going to be interested. Yep, exactly right. Uh, we've got to, got, to, got to maintain your calm. I mean, just keep in mind, it's, uh, I, I couldn't tell you who won any of our championships five years ago. I couldn't tell you who won our championships just this past fall. Um, we want to see kids just be competitive, obviously, but at the same time, we want them to learn. And I, I always tell the kids when I do my camps, I want to see you kids playing at the high school level, continuing to play soccer all throughout your career, maybe get an opportunity for a scholarship. You know, we do have some kids from that go to Madison School System and some of our local schools that have managed to get scholarships. And uh, 
I've been very happy for those for those kids. Uh, it just shows you the commitment those kids had. And many of them probably started with JCSA. A lot of them, a lot of them have. And usually, when I see those, a picture of those kids in the paper, it uh, brings a smile to my face. Uh, especially if I had any influence on that child, or t had an opportunity to even talk to that child, or had a chance to even see that child participate in our program over here. There, we mentioned uh, the British soccer camp, which is coming up uh, third third week of June. Uh, but there's actually another soccer camp being offered as well, correct? We've got the mesh camp that'll come up, and we've had that for I could tell you probably 13, 14 years now. Uh, it's coming up. It'll be at the end, the end of July. Actually, it's, it's something we use as a feeder into our, our start of our uh, fall season. It comes up July 22nd through the July 26th. Uh, we'll be working with some local schools and some coaches. The coaches will bring over their players from their teams and, and have a little more interaction with the kids. So it's a pretty good camp. I uh, strongly recommend that to anybody. Uh, we keep our, our costs have, have been the same over the 13 years that we've had this, uh, this camp. It's around. It's forty dollars for the first child in the family. Thirty-five dollars for any additional sibling in the same family. Um, it's a pretty good, really good camp. Again, um, when the coaches bring their players from their teams, there's more direct interaction with those players to the kids. So uh, I think we get a lot of good positive feedback out of that. So it's a. Uh, I strongly recommend the mash camp. If you have, if you miss the British, British soccer camp, you definitely want to participate in the, in the mash camp, and we'll have forms for that available today as well. Now you mentioned how that kind of feeds into uh, the fall season. When does the fall season begin, practice-wise? Fall season, the practice will actually start the first week of August, um, and then the games will uh, start with our jamboree. Our jamboree is at the. Uh, uh, I think we've set up the Jamboree this year. We've got to set up for sometime around the end of August. I think it's the last Saturday in August. It might be August 31st, if I remember it's, right. It's going to be close to that. It might be, uh, I can't remember exactly what date we set it up for. I don't have it here written in front of me, but um, it's somewhere around the end of end of August. So we basically, the kids will start practicing the first week of August, have about three weeks to practice. Gets us a chance to finalize our numbers, get our uniforms ordered. We order all of our uniforms locally here through Champ Sports. Um, Donnie Wattenberger has uh, done a phenomenal job with us over the years, so I can't ask for anything better from, than what he does for us. So, and then we've actually got a coach's clinic that will come the day after the MASH camp finishes. And that's done up by some uh, either Paul DeLamerts or we'll have uh, one of our high school other high school coaches do that. That's uh, offered on Saturday, J July the 27th from 9 to 11 p.m. 11 a 11 a.m. Sorry, 9 to 11 a.m. Uh, you'll learn a lot just from that. He'll they'll walk through some basic stuff. We've got again some booklets that we'll give out uh, if you need some. Uh, we'll get we'll do some handouts and stuff. So um, definitely something you want to participate in if you don't even want to be a coach still come to Coach's Clinic and learn a little bit more about the game. A little bit more about the rules anyway. You, you mentioned the Jamboree. The Jamboree is always, was always one of my favorite days when I was with JCSA because it's just a day where, you know, it, it's competitive to an extent, but it's not like nothing's going on the record. It's just the first day where kids finally get to express themselves, have fun. It's just an awesome day as a whole. Every kid that's ever participated in JCSA and all the years I've been involved with JCSA is they, they always remind me and talk about the Jamboree. That is their favorite day of the year. It's a, game where, a, a day where we just basically have scrimmage games at every age level. The games, there's no, we don't keep even a record of what happens that day. Yeah. Uh, you get an opportunity to play two half game scrimmages. It's a full day event. Everybody that, that signed up to be part of JCSA attends that event. So, and the, and the public's welcome to come over and watch that. That's something to see because you'll see kids in every field and that and basically across that back area of the complex and our soccer fields are on the very back of the complex uh, there's parking areas um, in different uh, locations that you can get to but um, I definitely recommend anybody from the public if you have not ever attended a soccer game and you want to come watch some youth soccer to pr come to that jamboree mm -hmm. the jamboree is something to see and every kid will always remind you of that jamboree and what, what experiences they've had you know sometimes we'll have an inflatable over there for the kids that aren't really playing or something to do while they in between yeah. games so this year we try we'll try to probably get an inf another inflatable over there to keep them busy is that what you do brian you go in the inflatable when you have some off time during that day? uh I, I just from a glance <laughs> i just glance at it occasionally just to make sure it's 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 an active area uh i can i can't really say that i've never not gotten on the inflatable <laughs> I, I typically get on there after everybody has left the field and and it's still inflated, so I have an opportunity to come up there and make a fool of myself. But that's that's you know, <laughs> kids will be kids, right? You know, I'm not. I'm still I'm so young at heart. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, so again, that's all coming up in the fall this year. Now th today is one sign up. Let's say 
people are out of town or they can't make it today, will there be other opportunities to sign up for the fall league? We've set up a second date at the end of uh, end of this month. Um, typically, it would be two weeks from today, but uh, I'm not sure we'll be able to offer a day uh, to do that. The 29th is uh, is the next day that we've set up for open registration, and again, we'll have open registrations through the month of July that you can still get signed up. Uh, we're not going to charge any late fees or anything like that until after the July 26th. So, okay. but the sooner the better that you get signed up. That it's best for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, as far yeah. as the board members, I've, I've talked about several board members. I want to recognize some of those guys, some of those people. Uh, myself, obviously, Kaylin Sullivan, my daughter, Lori Sacklaben, my wife, Jamie Kelsey, uh, Greg Schwartz, Eric Dodge, uh, Julie Bell has uh, been part of our program. So, and there's a lot of been a lot of people that have been board members over the past uh, several several years that or a number of years since JCSA was has, was founded. That it really made an impact on on keeping JCSA alive. So I'm very thankful for those people. You know, they there are so many people that again, this is all volunteer work, and the reason they're doing this is because they love the kids, they love the game, and they know that these kids are the future of everything, and they just want to give back. And I think that's so awesome to see. Yep, yeah, absolutely. You want to give the kids an opportunity. You know, back like you mentioned. Soccer wasn't that popular when I was young. We didn't have a high school team at any school here locally. So just to see where it's come in the last 25 years is phenomenal. And uh, hopefully we'll continue to see that. We've got a professional team, semi -pro or professional team down in Louisville, oh, Louisville FC. Awesome team could make the They may advance eventually into MLS. Mm -hmm. uh, but at where they are right now, uh, I think they're happy. They've won two championships. Mm -hmm. So they're in the process of building a stadium. Definitely recommend anybody if you have not watched those guys compete to go down and try to catch a game. They are obviously still, you know, currently playing, and they're playing. I think if I'm not at, mistaken, at Slugger Field. At Slugger Field, so uh, a good good opportunity to go watch those guys play. So, and if you can't see them, go to Cincinnati. That's an MLS team now. Cincinnati. Yeah, they're is. in the MLS, and I'm hoping I'm hoping that at uh, little uh, and with expand with a stadium yeah. being built, I expect that uh, Little FC will eventually make that make that change. And again, the British Soccer Camp that's going on June the 17th through the 21st, and then the Mash Camp is the one that's at the end of the summer. That's the one that's kind of the precursor to the season. Yeah, the Mash Camp. If you missed if you missed the British Soccer Camp, you definitely want to try to catch some Mash Camp. Uh, we typically get somewhere around 30, 35 kids for the Mash Camp, so which is a good number. And again, that's not an overwhelming amount of kids for a coach because the coaches will bring anybody that does the coach that runs the uh, the Mash Camp will bring their kids from their school their uh, school from the high school team. And those kids will interact with the kids, and so we can break them out in smaller groups. Mm. Uh, again, we mentioned there are so many opportunities um, to sign up and just to watch soccer. You mentioned it, you mentioned just a minute ago. I love you know, uh, I love going to watch Louisville City FC. Um, again, they've won the last two USL titles. Cincinnati is a great atmosphere there as well. Go watch some of these high school games. Go watch some of these kids play. I need to make it over there this year. Unfortunately, my schedule a lot of times has me at other fields. But just go watch soccer. I would tell you what, it, I think some people, all they need to do is watch it and they'll fall in love with it. Absolutely. And, and like I mean, we mentioned earlier, we talked about the Jamboree. Uh, the Jamboree is at the end of August. Uh, it'll, if, you, if you've not on our face, don't, don't have us on our, your, or on, or your set up on, your, as on our Facebook page. It's Jefferson County Soccer Association. If you go on, your, on Facebook and just look that up, like us, you'll get all of our updates. Uh, anything we have that's up and coming, registration dates, jamboree dates. Sometimes we'll post schedules on there, so uh, definitely something you want to try to attach to. Uh, and if you again, if you're not able to make it today, send us an email, madisonisoccer at gmail.com. We'll reply back to the forms, any forms you need. Just kind of tell us what you want in the email, and uh, we'll be um, we'll try to get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Uh, coming up on the end of the program, anything else you want to say, sir? No, I really can't. Uh, I'm just hoping for a good turnout today. Uh, again, if you miss today, just there will be more opportunities. We're going to offer another open registration at the end of June, and we'll have several open, reg open registrations through the month of July. So the sooner you get signed up, the better. Probably I would recommend that to anybody. But if you do miss today and you want us to mail you one, we can mail you uh, a registration form. Uh, just keep maybe catch us at the fields. Obviously, we'll be setting up the soccer fields through the month of August as we get prepared for the uh, – for the jamboree, so if you don't make it over there today, you know, try to come over there during the during the week and try to catch one of us over there. And we typically keep farms at the field. We've got a little white shed we work out of, so yeah. and we're hoping to replace that shed. So we're looking for, looking for some money, looking for sponsorships. Anybody interested in, in providing a sponsorship to JCSA? Another thing you could come over and talk to me about today, or send us an email on. Love to have uh, sponsorships. That helps uh, obviously cut back on some of our costs. We've got a lot of things we've got to pay for: paint, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
equipment and so forth. So Awesome. Well, Brian, thank you very much for joining me this morning, and best of luck, okay? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jordan. This is a bag. But for Steve, this bag gives him food cred. Because now everyone knows that when they have that craving, or they're just looking for the perfect deal, well, they just need to follow Steve. And if you're as hungry as Steve, now you can get a tender McChicken and a small order of fries for just $2.